United States has now overtaken Russia as the largest uh, producer of natural gas. And just the increase, just the increase in U.S. oil production since 2008 is greater than the output of nine of the 13 OPEC countries. For Washington, this unconventional revolution has been a major plus. Indeed, it has been the most dynamic uh, development, uh, the most positive development in the U.S. economy since the recession began in 2008. And as has been clear from what President Obama has said, one reason that the Obama administration has embraced uh, shale gas is not only its energy terms, uh, but what it means for the competitiveness of the United States, and in particular, what it means in terms of jobs. Uh, since uh, in 2012, over two million jobs uh, were the result of this unconventional revolution, and that number might hit three and a half million uh, by 2020. Another impact, which really was not anticipated, is that lo and behold, it's helping the United States achieve its Kyoto and its climate change objectives because U.S. Uh, carbon uh, emissions, CO2 emissions, are now back to the level of 1994. And obviously there are policies at work, there's changes in the economy, but a very big part of that has been natural gas taking the place of coal in electric generation, which has been one of the other notable developments of the last few years as you have this abundant, inexpensive natural gas. One of the things that the Europeans need to do as they consider this is become more realistic about um, shale gas development. It's so striking that there is this wall of emotion and passion around the subject with no experience. And if you look at the United States, which is highly regulated in terms of its environment, there are a series of environmental issues that need to be managed. Uh, they're largely being managed. Uh, they require uh, best practices in terms of technology, best practices in terms of regulation. But there's so many myths that are kind of disconnected from the reality of it. And I think that part of e Europe needs to look at this in a, in a more clear-eyed way. Up until 2004, it was thought that the price of oil would stay around $20 a barrel. Other commodities would be low. And then something very dramatic happened in the world economy, which was the emergence of the emerging nations onto a scale where their consumption, their growth of middle class, their economic growth really transformed these markets. And that, uh, along with some disruptions, is what sent prices up so dramatically. And when you look back at it, you say, well, prices had to go up because of this whole almost unexpected pressure because companies had not been investing on the basis. They didn't know, people didn't see it coming on this scale and they had to play catch up. And so prices went up and that it led to greater efficiency uh, as well as bringing on new supplies that would not and could not have come on at $20 a barrel. So if we look at now at a global economy that in two decades or so could be twice as big as it is today, or maybe two and a half decades, whatever it is, and you have this, this huge demographic, socioeconomic change, this rising incomes, uh, that means a lot of uh, demand for resources. And the result of that is going to be that these resources are going to be used more efficiently. And people are going to find ways to use them more efficiently. And the stimulus is going to be there. I mean, just take one simple example, which was that it was in response to rising prices that the fuel efficiency targets for automobiles in the United States was doubled. Doubling fuel efficiency targets for automobiles in the world's largest gasoline market has a big global impact. Uh, so. I think there are two dimensions to look at this in the years ahead. One is what do companies, what do innovators do to increase efficiency in which productivity resources? And the other is how do these emerging markets make sure that they are building more resource efficient infrastructures in, uh, the, in, in the future and not looking back to the kind of really rather inefficient uh, industries and consumption patterns they have. And I think that 
you know, when you look out and you see that this uh, growth in, in the middle class, you say that is really um, a huge challenge, not just for the world economy in general, but is really a challenge for the resource uh, industries in terms of supplying them. And that means that uh, we're going to have to see an increase in productivity. And it will come about, it will be driven uh, by the markets, by the reality of supply and demand, which are two very powerful forces.